Joe is going to tell us a little about the Middle Eastern Arabic culture, and Pierre can fill in. But I just, I, as a mathematician, I've always respected the Arabic culture because of without them, without the Hindus, we'd all be using Roman numerals, which is a really tough thing to deal with. So. What happened with math, one of the big things in math, and this is going to bore most of you, but except maybe Harjeet, who's an engineer, with mathematics, the concept of zero is a huge thing. We take zero for granted. I mean, it's just always there. It's before one, it's after minus one, all that. But zero was a huge concept. And without it, we couldn't do much mathematics. So about maybe 1800, BC, the Babylonians came up with something where it wasn't really a zero, but it was a void. It was a placeholder that they used in their mathematics. And then the, the Egyptians, a couple hundred years later, they, they didn't use uh, numbers like the Hindus and Arabs did. They used pictures or hieroglyphics. So they, would, they actually had a picture for zero, but they didn't have positioning. So like to us, if we write one, two, three, that's completely different from three, two, one. To Egyptians back then, the hieroglyphics is not, because there's a picture of a one, picture of a two, a picture of a three. Meanwhile, over in China, they were doing it completely different. They were doing more of a physical representation of mathematics, where using rods or sticks or abacus, things like that, a zero would be, we're not moving that row. So it wasn't specifically spelled out or written out, but it was, it was uh, just not moving that row of the abacus or whatever. So there's a big gap here in the mathematics. The Greeks, the Egyptians, you know, they, they weren't progressing. About 500, uh, the year 500 AD, in India, there was a, a brilliant guy, Bawa, you guys might know his, his name. But he came up with the idea of a zero with the numerals. and. There's a Sanskrit word. Do you guys speak Sanskrit, anyone? For void, I think it's sunya. 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 Sunya means zero. Which is void or empty or zero. And they started using that, but they didn't have positioning. So now we go over to Babylon, actually Persia. And it's a couple hundred years later, about 700 AD. And there's this guy, Al. Kwama Mitri, something like that. Not butchering his name, but that's the basic thing. He comes up with the whole decimal positioning thing where he put numbers in the order and it means something. So he borrowed from the Hindus and the Jains also this zero and put it in the positioning. So this guy is, was brilliant. And because of his use of zero, the, the Arabic word for uh, nothing is cipher, S-I-F-R. Which became cipher, which became cipher, which when the Italians got it became uh, severio, which when the French got it, it was zero, and when we got it, it became zero. So that's how we got it from the Arab word cipher. So this Al Zama Mitri, um, he became the father of this this whole discipline. And he did all this great stuff, and. He, he wrote this book. Um, when you translate his name to the Latin, Al Zama Mitri becomes Al Jabr, J A B R, A L J A B R, which is Al Jabr becomes Al Jabra, and we call it Algebra because of this guy. Now, also, what he did, he wrote a book. In the beginning, like China was isolated. They didn't trade in the different places. Once they started trading, you had some knowledge going back and forth. So he recognized that he got the numerals from the Indian community. So he wrote a book called Al Zamatri's uh, Rules of Indian Numerals. And when you translated that to Latin, it came out to something like algorithmes, whatever which evolved into algorithm. And that's where we get the word algorithm, which is in every computer program and all that stuff. So this one Arabic person is responsible for algebra, algorithm, al gore. Uh, no, nothing to do with that. But basically, you had, before trade, before people traveled other places, they were developing all this on their own, independently, 
like China with their stuff, uh, Babylonians, Egyptians, Greeks, all that. But once there was trade, they took the good ideas from India that the Hindus and Jains did, brought it over to the Arab world, they did their stuff, kicked it back over to India, and they did improvements, so that now we have Hindu Arabic numerals and could do easy mathematics, whereas if it was Ro uh, Roman numerals or something like that, we'd be in big trouble. So the Arab world has played a huge role in mathematics and other sciences, and that's my 30 seconds or whatever. Right.